stranger to the hill. Thank you. <clears throat> so, first pro tip when you're doing presentations is don't do them in PowerPoint. Do them in PDF because then your font doesn't get all messed up. <laughs> so, you got to give me a second because I need to actually pull up my talk. And here we go. Bear with me. Pray that this works. <laughs> of course, the same pro tip makes everyone just wait <laughs> while the while the presentation opens. I'm about to crash this machine. <laughs> What's that? It's okay, we got it. So. No, we don't want that. Okay. So, I hit the escape button, Sarah. <laughs> how to give a presentation. Oh, there it is. It's over there. <laughs> or close, close everything and I got a PowerPoint. Yeah. Or make it full screen. Or whatever. Well, while we're trying to figure out the slides, um, I do want to talk about a couple of things. This is amazing. We're here in the Durham Convention Center. And um, 12 years ago, was my first time teaching senior design at NC State. And uh, throughout the course of the year, we had nothing. We had no, no syllabus. We had nothing. We were trying to figure it out along the way. And uh, wow, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. And we're maybe halfway through the year. And uh, I said to the students, I'm like, you know, wouldn't it be cool to do a, like a symposium out in RTP? I can invite some of my friends from industry and they can come see. And uh, the, the students were like, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, well, you're going to have to organize it because I can't do it. And this, this student, his name is James Lawrence, said, I'll organize it. James, James is here today. Um, he organized the very first senior design symposium, class of 2007. There was maybe 35 students that year. We had maybe 150 people show up from industry. Um, a fellow by the name of Joe Vance, who's an alum of the program, worked for a company called Varian, and he sponsored the beer and wine and was kind of slinging beers and wines from behind a, a, you know, a sign for his company. Um, and it was just an amazing night, and we had an awesome time. And uh, it was the first ever one, which Look at it 12 years later at the Durham Convention Center. It's just unbelievable. Um, and there's a little table of alumni over here. I'm not going to name them all, but um, I just want to say that everything that's happened here, it happens because of you, because of the students. Um, I'm going to call out Tim Martin. Tim was the first ever student to be like, I'm starting a company, you know? And uh, that company did not make it <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. But the thing that Tim did, Tim told me this is possible, that you can do this. And the very next one after that was 410 Medical, and they raised almost three million and got an FDA cleared product out of it. Um, or that was no, or well, whichever, some of them. Um, so thank you for letting me know that it's possible. And all of you, you know everyone there at the table, I could talk about all of you, and I could talk about all of you too. Um, I didn't know 
that the, uh, the day that this picture was taken by Devin Hubbard, Devin Hubbard took this picture about a month before you all walked into the lab or the, those UNC, uh, or those NC State of you walked into the lab. Um, I didn't know when Devin took this picture and then subsequently photoshopped it. Um, <laughs> That, that I'd be given my last lecture tonight here at the end of the year, and I didn't know what this picture meant at the time, but um, I woke up and I realized what this picture meant. And it's just an episode. What's going to happen when I hit the button here? Oh, I got to do it this way. This is going to be fun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm flipping slides. <laughs> Pro tip, right here. <laughs> Use BDF. Lifelong learners that choose biomedical engineering as an area of study have the most innovative minds in the galaxy. They do. They absolutely do. And today, I'm going to talk about how that is. Um, now again, when I arrived in biomedical engineering, it was 1998. I pulled up to UNC, um, a rough jade. Yes. And uh, Dr. David Lavely started the polishing, but he didn't get to finish. <laughs> and, and so I worked for, uh, for Dr. Lavely, and uh, we also had our own Yoda, um, Carol Lucas. And uh, I started my training in this biomedical engineering. Um, but I didn't get to finish my training. My training was cut short, and uh, I had to go out into the galaxy to kind of make, make my own way. Um, and when I got back in 2006, uh, for some reason, I had this crazy idea to just start sending kids out into the hospitals to do needs assessments. You got to see that in 2006, no one sent undergraduate students into hospitals to do needs assessments. It was not being done anywhere in the world. There was a small program at Stanford called Biodesign, which was sending postgraduate fellows, about four of them at the time, one with a PhD in biomedical engineering, one medical doctor, one with a law degree, and one with an MBA, already granted and they would send those four people into the hospital. And I said, well, if they can send those four people into the hospital, I can send undergrads into the hospital. Let's go for it. <laughs> um, and subsequently became a model for how to do undergraduate needs assessment in biomedical engineering. It became a model, which is used today across the nation. Um, but I, can't, I couldn't tell you at the time why it worked. Um, it just worked, you know? And uh, I was untrained doing something that worked, but not really knowing why it worked. And so, back in, back on Halloween day in 1957, there was a blackout in Minnesota. And that blackout caused the tragic death of a young child who was on a pacemaker. This unmet medical need led to Dr. Lillehei up there in the left corner. Dr. Lillehei of the University of Minnesota and Earl Bakken an engineer to work together to solve this problem. And they invented the first ever battery powered pacemaker. 
That invention led to the formation of a company called Medtronic. Medtronic is the largest medical device company in the world today. I want to point out very specifically that the unmet medical need was that for the patient. And that the doctor and the engineer worked together. They collaborated together to solve this problem. And this is one of the lessons in my training. <clears throat> this whole idea of doctors and engineers working together <coughs> has been really um, spread by the ambassadorship of two two individuals that I can think of. Paul Yock there in the top left corner. Paul Yock's a doctor. He's got credit for founding the Stanford Biodesign Program, the one that I mentioned earlier that sends those four fellows into hospitals. I think they're up to 12 now. Um, he just this past January won the Gordon Prize. That's one of the most prestigious prizes given by the National Academy of Engineers for his innovative thinking in putting teams together, teams of doctors and engineers alongside with business people and attorneys into hospitals to identify unmet medical needs and solve them. Think about it for a second though, a medical doctor receiving one of the most prestigious engineering awards. Something to think about. There in the bottom right is Wallace Coulter. Wallace Coulter was an engineer. He was an entrepreneur who founded the Coulter Corporation. He was an inventor who invented the Coulter Counter some of you probably did like a Coulter counter experiment when you were in school. <clears throat> that invention led to this company, the Coulter Corporation, later acquired by Beckman to become Beckman Coulter. And Wallace left his entire fortune to a foundation, which is one of only two that some people might say are responsible for biomedical engineering as a major at all, <clears throat> but it exists today because of two foundations, the, the Coulter Foundation and the Whitaker Foundation. Without these two foundations, this might not be an academic degree. The amount of money they put into it over the years is absolutely unbelievable. And there's a direct correlation between the money they were putting in and these academic departments being formed. The Coulter Foundation supports grants only to engineers and doctors that submit them together as co-PIs. You can't get a Coulter grant without being a doctor and an engineer working together. Now again, I want to point out that in both cases, they're asking doctors and engineers to work together. Very specifically not for an engineer to go find a problem from a doctor. Very specifically not for a doctor to go have an engineer complete their thought. I've got this idea, will you make it for me? No, it is not the doctor asking the engineer to do a job. No, it is not the engineer looking for a problem from the doctor. It is the engineer and the doctor working together to solve an unmet need that they both care about that they really care about. But what does this have to do with innovation? Man, this would look so much better if the slides just flipped. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for this next part. So innovation, I said biomedical engineers 
those who choose biomedical engineering have the most innovative minds in the galaxy. How is that? Well, what does innovation mean anyway? You know what it means? Have you thought about the definition of this word, innovation? Innovation can be described as increasing value. Increasing value, bringing value. Let's look at that a little closer. Increasing value is increasing benefits over cost. The benefits to cost ratio. Okay? If you can make something better, but it costs about the same, then that's increasing the value. If you can make it better and cheaper, that's much more valuable. Right? This is a definition of value. Increasing value is innovation. For those of you that have been paying attention to the CMS and the Affordable Care Act, we've moved from a fee-for-service healthcare system to a value-based healthcare system. What do they mean when they say value-based healthcare system? They mean improving health outcomes, the benefits, and reducing the cost of care. Right? It's the same definition. We are living in a world where we have to be innovative in order to be within the economic engine of the Affordable Care Act. And besides, it's good business. I mean, making health care better and cost less sounds good to me, right? Well, what does this mean? What about benefits? What are benefits? Benefits comes from Latin. I, I think more of the Italian. Bene, bene, it's good. Benefits, it's good. Benefits <laughs> means to do good to. If you're doing good to somebody, it's beneficial. Bene, good, to do good to. If you're doing good, you're caring. Improving benefits is caring. Care about people. What about costs? Cost has to do with effort. How much effort are you putting into it? Engineers improve efficiency, right? They make things more efficient, take cost out of things. This is what engineers are doing. It's about reducing the energy spent on work. If you're reducing the energy spent on work, you're working smart. To work smart. Takes the scientific method, takes the Socratic method, takes design thinking, takes being thoughtful. So if you're caring and you're thoughtful in what you do, you will be innovative. Right? You with me? Yeah? Well, why, what about these BMEs, the most innovative minds in the galaxy? The caring doctor. thoughtful engineer, the caring doctor, and the thoughtful engineer working together, the doctor and the engineer, the doctor and the engineer. 
the biomedical engineer. <laughs> you were all born caring and thoughtful. It's tearing you apart. I don't know if I want to be a doctor or an engineer. I can't decide. I keep changing my mind. It's tearing me apart. I'm having an existential crisis. I think I might just go into consulting. <laughs> Look, you might be better, you might be stronger in the engineering. You might be stronger in the caregiving. You might choose that you want to go other places and become an attorney, James. <laughs> But wherever you go, wherever you go, don't forget that when you were in high school, you were like, I want to do that biomedical engineering thing, and I don't know why, because you're that guy. You're the Jedi, the last of them, and they're awakening right now. You are balanced in the engineering and the medicine. And don't forget it, right? If you're working as an engineer or as a doctor or both, if you're working as an attorney or a consultant, just remember that this is in this is in all of you. This engineering and this medicine, this caring, this thoughtfulness is in all of you. And to work together with all of these different mindsets and skill sets, work together to solve the problems. Don't just go look for someone else to give you the problem to solve. Don't hand your problem to someone else to solve it for you. Be caring and be thoughtful and work together. Thank you.